lard and bread. Okay. <laughs> All right, you can refresh the computer. We're live. Just check in sound. Hang on. Okay, I, I can you. hear myself. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> so, in by Jeff. Excuse me. I lost you. Good afternoon. We'll start in just a minute, just getting all of our technology in order. Hold on one second. <laughs> Let me just click I did. Um, enlarge. And then anything will pop up there. Okay. Okay. I see Diana's here. Hi. <laughs> all right. Just give everybody a few minutes to come on and then I'll tell you what we're doing today. I just from New Hampshire, very chilly New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> if you're just coming on, um, welcome. Tell me where you're from. I'm in very chilly upstate New York. It is 27 degrees, which I guess isn't horrible. It, the sun is out. Where is everybody from? Is it warmer than 27 degrees where you are? <laughs> Sarah Swanson's from Florida. <laughs> it's, it's definitely warmer where Sarah is. <laughs> Um, just to let you know, if if the video gets a little bit blurry at all, it could be our Wi-Fi. Um, if you stick around, and then if you want to watch anything that you don't see later, it usually gets a little bit better. We have some Wi-Fi issues sometimes, so hopefully we'll be good. Fingers crossed we can make it through here and not have any problems. We had a couple this morning. Oh, we got a people from Arizona. 66. Arizona. 60, oh, 66 is chilly for you guys, but it's still better than 27. <laughs> San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska's got to be cold. How cold is it in Nebraska? <laughs> if it's warmer than here, I'm going to be real bummed. <laughs> Ohio, Fort Wayne, Indiana. All right, so we're going to get started. Um, I am uh, <laughs> I am here, obviously. Um, I have my notes. I'm just going to read them because I get so excited talking about machines that I get distracted. So I'm just going to take a look at what I have here for you. Um, I even wrote my name down so I wouldn't forget it. I am Jessica Vandenberg, uh, the owner of So Many Creations, and I am taking over the Janome page this afternoon for a little bit because I'm going to talk to you about my Horizon Quilt Maker 15,000. And I'm super excited. I use this machine every day and, well, almost every day. You know, some days aren't so days. But I'm excited to show you how I use it as a bag maker. So in case you don't know me, let me introduce myself. Um, I am the pattern designer behind So Many Creations. I know some of you follow me on my page. If you don't and you wanna hop over there, you can. I actually demoed on this machine some of the embroidery features earlier this morning. And where, here it is. Um, if you don't know me or if you're not sure if you know me, have you made a Diva wallet? If you've made a Diva wallet, then you do know me. Of course that happens. I didn't put the screws in because I was demoing that. And that is pretty much how all of my demos go. Something silly always happens, so forgive me. Um, if you don't know me, welcome. I have been designing patterns for about 10 years now. I signed on to be a Janome maker about two years ago, but I have had a Janome machine I'm gonna say for probably about eight years and not machine, machines. I have several Janomes. Uh, I don't think you can ever have too many, can you? <laughs> I don't think so. So like I said, uh, we're gonna talk about the 15,000 today. So what I thought I would do, just to get you a little bit more familiar with me, is show you a couple of my new bag patterns. These were released in December and they were all made on this machine. And then what I'm gonna do is um, show you, I'm gonna bring the camera over here and show you some of my favorite features and my favorite feet. So this bag right here is the Liana Bowler bag. And I made this all on the 15,000. This is cork fabric and this is a lightweight canvas. And this one right here is the Evie Messenger bag. This has a really cool zippered flap, has cork on it as well, and again, is made out of canvas. And so as a bag maker, I just love this machine because it gives me a lot of options when I'm making these bags to get great top stitching, to put in my zippers nice and straight, to add my hardware, some of it needs to be sewn in, um, and also to sew with cork without having any limitations. Uh, just to let you know, uh, you might have heard another voice in the background. My mom is here answering comments and questions. She's kind of monitoring everything on the computer. So if you have a question or if you need me to show you anything again or zoom in on anything, just let her know. If we miss anything, I will go back later and answer any questions that you have. 
and I will upload this video and save it. So if you have anything later, uh, one word John, you can absolutely ask me a question and I will answer you as well. And I'll leave my uh, contact information. If you are watching this later, the more specific you are with your question, the better. Sometimes people get excited and they say, what's the name of that bag? And I don't know which one. So just, you know, tell me exactly what you'd like to know and I will get you an answer. So let's see. Let me ask you a question. Yes. What do you use as a stabilizer for structure? Uh, so in my bags, um, there is Decor Bond, which is a fusible medium weight interfacing by Pellon interfacing. And I also have fusible fleece in some of them, like this one. That's going to give me a nice structure. And also, if I have any hardware on the front that's heavy, the fusible fleece and decor bond combination really gives it um, a nice, um, it helps it stand up and gives it good structure. Plus, it's not hard on my machine. And like I mentioned, I do have several Janomis. I have a small travel machine. I have this one. I have a few in between. And I also have the HG9, which is a heavy duty machine. And all of them handle my bags really well. So if you're new to bag making, um, and here are a few things that I look for as an experienced bag maker when I'm buying a sewing machine. Um, one of the thing, things with bags, they do tend to be a little bit thick, especially in your seams sometimes in the bottom here. This one in particular has several layers of cork and fabric and interfacing. And so I look for a machine that can get through all of those layers without any issues. All of my Janomis, even my teeny tiny travel Janome can get through it with no problems. That's kind of what got me hooked on Janome many years ago. Um, I owned Janome's before I became a maker, so it was just a really natural um, transition because why not promote a product that I already am in love with? So I always look for something that can handle layers. Uh, did you have another question? Ginger, yes. um, she's asking, do you mean de Decor Bond, the fusible stabilizer? Yes, yeah, Pellon, it's number 809, Decor Bond. It's a medium weight fusible. If I need it, and I do in some patterns, but not in all, I will also add fusible fleece, which is 987F, I believe. Um, they're both on my website, and I have done them in a couple of videos as well. And using both of those, I can get through that on my machine with no problem. Um, let's see here. So top stitching is key. If you have made bags, you know this. And if you're new, um, top stitching is, it's one of the real final touches on your bags, but it's also something that me personally, if it's not perfect and precise, it'll drive me crazy. You're gonna do top stitching on your handles. I have top stitching down here on the bottom edge, top stitching around my zipper. It's really important and for me, I like it to be as straight and even as possible. And I have some tricks to show you using um, one of the feet that you might not expect uh, to really get that top stitching nice and straight. That's very important. I feel another question yeah. coming. Yes. <laughs> Kimberly has, I have an S9 and M7. How do you, how do those stand up to layers? Um, I do not personally have the M7 or the S9. I know um, from seeing them in classrooms, because I did teach back when we traveled, um, I have had both of those in my classroom and they handled everything fine. Like I said, I have not found a Janome that can't handle layers. Obviously, when you get into like an HD9 or more of an industrial machine, that's made for layers. So it's going to handle it a little bit better, but any of your standard Janome machines um, seem to handle it just fine. What size needle? Ginger is asking you. Um, typically when I'm sewing, I have either a size 80 or a size 90. I bump up to a 90 if I have a lot of thick layers. Um, I st stick with a size 80 for uh, pretty pretty much for quilting and, um, and bag making. But if I need a little bit heavier duty, and sometimes when I'm embroidering on cork, I'll bump up to 90. So I'm usually somewhere in there. Do you use all the stabilizers if making the bags from cork? Uh, that's a really great question. If I'm making a bag from cork, it will depend on the bag. So this one in particular, the bottom here, these accents, I did interface them just to give them a little bit of stability. The bag has interfacing end fleece. The handles don't. So it just really depends on the bag. And on each of the patterns, I instruct you on, on how to do that. It depends on the size of the bag and how much cork is in there. Smaller bags require a little bit less stabilizer where a bigger bag like this that needs to stand up needs a little bit more. Um, so let me see here. It's Sorry. Blurry. 
I, unfortunately, it will get a little bit blurry, and I do apologize. I can't do anything about that. It will come back in. Um, but like I said, I don't know why this is, but usually later on it will get a little bit better. So if you want to come back and watch and check in, um, it could be the Wi-Fi here. It could be um, where you are. I'm not really sure. I'm sorry about that. And Kimberly like to know your web page, website and your Facebook page. Yes, okay. I will list those when I... Um, uh, when I save the video, but my Facebook page and my website are both So Many Creations, S-E-W. Uh, you can look up the Facebook page and the group that way. The website is so many creations ny.com and I will link them all at the top of the video as soon as we post that uh, when we're done. So uh, let me see here. We'll hold off on questions for just a second. I'll just tell you a couple more things. We'll take some more questions and then I'll pop over here. So uh, for zippers, I love this machine for zippers. There are a couple of feet options that I'll show you for putting zippers in. I know they're scary. I know a lot of you, I hear it all the time. I haven't done a zipper since eighth grade home ec or zippers scare me. I have some techniques that will help you get through that and some great options to make them less scary. Uh, this zipper right here is done kind of like a sandwich style where you have fabric, zipper, and more fabric. I use my quarter inch foot for that. When I need to get nice and close, I use my zipper foot and I have those lined up. I'll show you those as well. And hardware, sometimes on a bag, you can see on this right here, sometimes the hardware has to be sewn in, not the metal part, but next to um, the fabric. And I always look for a foot that's gonna help me make that easier and help me to sew that hardware in so I can get nice and close. I have another bag right here I wanted to show you too. So this hardware is also, this is sewn in right here, so I needed a foot to get nice and close. And this one was actually embroidered on this machine. I'm not gonna talk about the embroidery in this video, uh, but I did embroider this piece of cork and it came out great. It was actually very easy to do. I'm gonna move this for a second because we're almost ready to switch off. And um, again, special fabrics. In bag making, you can do them all out of quilter's cotton or you can use some different fabrics like I do. I use some canvas, I use some cork fabric, every once in a while faux leather. And what I love about this machine is that I have actually never had to use my Teflon foot. The cork doesn't stick and this machine, you know, feeds it through beautifully. I don't have any issues with it. Sometimes when using a Teflon foot, it's not as easy to get an accurate seam allowance. I like my foot that has the flange on the side. So I like that I can use this machine to get through those layers, sew next to the hardware and put in my zippers. So what I'm gonna do, if there's no more questions just for a minute, or do we have anything? <laughs> Bear with me, my mom has not done a live before, so she's she's keeping up as best as she can. And she's doing good. Yes. <laughs> No, just no? a hi. Okay, hi. I'm just gonna <laughs> pop over here and move the camera here so I can show you the machine. So hang on one sec for me. There's some more of my bags back there. And it's just gonna take a second because there's usually a couple second delay. All right. All right, I'm gonna wait until you can see it on the computer. <clears throat> can you see my sewing machine yet? Yes. Okay, and yes, you have a question? When I use those iron on stabilizers, I get wrinkles. When I had to pull the inside out that didn't always iron out, is there a trick to avoid that? Um, there are some tricks when it comes to using the fusibles. One thing that I always use, and um, forgive me if I don't get too deep into this, I will actually be doing a video on this on my page uh, shortly is to use a pressing clapper. And if you're not familiar with that, I do have them on my website and I have them in a couple of the videos. And basically after you give your bag a really good press, after you've turned it right side out, I always use the pointed end of my um, ironing board. Give it a really good press, use steam, use best press or a light starch if you need to. And by using the pressing clapper, and what that is, it's a piece of wood that's heavy and it helps to um, just smooth everything out. So while the interfacing and the fabric is warm, I will kind of press it like this or leave it in certain spots. It really helps to smooth that out. That's a topic that somebody had uh, requested for my page, so I will be doing that probably in the next couple of weeks. So if you want to follow me over there, uh, there's tons of bag making tips because I do a video every Friday. Do we have another question? Yeah, well, it's, where can I get cork for seeing online? I'm in New Zealand. 
<laughs> oh, that's a tough one. Um, I don't know. I, I would tell you you can order from me, but I will tell you right now that shipping is going to be awful. Um, unfortunately, Australia and New Zealand, your shipping to you is terrible. Uh, let me think about that, and if I can find a place for you, I definitely will link that for you. I'll see if there's some place that has better shipping or that's closer to you. Ginger has another. Is yeah. there a reason you use a mat under your 1500? Oh, it's just because this is um, this is my work area, so I just put it here. Um, I at home, it's not underneath there. Um, yeah, I have. <laughs> right now, we're in my um, my video space, but I also sew here sometimes and cut fabric for shipping, so that's why I have a mat here. So this is not for any particular reason. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through a couple of the functions here, and then um, if we have some questions, we'll kind of disperse them a little bit. So um, first of all, this machine is amazing. I don't know if you have one of these. If you do, let me know, or if you're thinking about getting one. Uh, she's a beast. She's a big machine. It is heavy. It's about 35 pounds, but I don't move it too often. It usually just stays right at home. Uh, but what I love about this machine is this right here. This bed space is so big. And that's important for quilting, but it's also important for bag making because on certain bags, you might have to turn things like when you're sewing a zipper or you know working on certain parts where you need this space too. So I absolutely love how big this is. Um, it's actually one of the reasons it's hard for me sometimes to sew on my little Janome because it's a great machine, but I miss this. Um, so I love that and the extension table. This extension table is really big. Uh, the ruler on here measures to 20 inches and it's bigger than that. It's uh, probably 25, 26 inches. Somebody from Janome might know that, but I love how big this is because it helps to distribute the weight. And if you, if you don't have a table for your machine or if you have one and you don't use it, let me convince you why you should use it and should have one. This right here is going to hold the weight so that when you're sewing something, Let's say that I'm sewing this right here and I don't have the table. This is gonna pull away from my machine and that means I don't get straight stitches and I don't get nice top stitching. So I always have this table on. Um, I did mention uh, that this is also an embroidery machine, which I'm not going to talk about today, but back here, you guys can't see it, but my embroidery unit is attached. That is what's so phenomenal about this is that I never have to take this off. I don't have to put it away. I don't have to unhook it. It stays there while I sew and I'm not hurting it and it's not in my way. I just think that's a really cool feature. Um, a couple of the other things, and I feel like there might be some questions. My mom's glancing no. over. Oh, no, we're good. Okay. Um, I, this touch screen. This right here, for those of us that need glasses to live, this thing is great because it's so big and it comes with its own stylus, which I don't use as often as I should, but when you have nails, sometimes it's hard to get in there. So I do love that. And the light. And I don't know if you guys know this or not, or if you have one and you use it, but this right here, this extra light, I... I just love it. I'm gonna close it for now, just so that it's not in the camera, um, in the way, but it's just, it's great lighting under here. We have the light bar here, this pull out light. So I just can't say enough good stuff about this machine. So some of the functions on here that I use every single time I'm sewing a bag, my scissor function, absolutely. I'm always using that to cut my threads. Ginger's saying the video's frozen. Uh, let's see. Um. It's still going. Yes. Yep, this one's building. Yep, it's still, it could be on her end. It could have just froze for a second. I'm just going to keep talking and hopefully we're good. Um, so tell me if you get a lot more of those. Okay. So, the table is 26 inches. 20, Amy, yep. Yes. Um, and you might also notice if it freezes on your computer, so just let me know. Okay, so we're going to keep going here. Um, so the scissors, absolutely. Um, I cannot buy a machine that does not have a scissor feature. Absolutely can't. This right here is for the presser foot, and mine is always up, but if I need to put it down when I'm changing my feet, nice and simple, I don't really use the lever in the back because I don't need to. Needle up and down is always down. I always sew with my needle down. You're not frozen. It's, it's, I think it's ginger. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I have right here my lock stitch, which I do use when I'm doing my top stitching to start and stop, and then obviously my back stitch. Uh, it has the start stop button, but I like to use my pedal, so I don't use that except for embroidery. But let's take a look over here. 
and I am reading my notes just to make sure I don't forget anything because like I said, I get so excited. Um, I have in the straight stitch needle play right now. So you might notice that some of my buttons here are grayed out. And that's because this machine is smarter than me and it knows that when I'm using this plate that I can't use some of these features. Some of these here are zigzag and decorative. I would not be able to sew with this plate on. So when I take this off, which I'll show you when I get to the zipper foot, which is just a button down here, I'm able to get all of my stitches. I have this on a lot. Um, I just kind of leave it on. I switch back and forth, but this one's on quite a bit because everything I do, it's fine with this needle plate. So let me see here. Okay, let's go into feet. Um, do we have any questions before I talk about feet? Okay, so I brought with me my four favorite feet that I cannot live without. Uh, my number one here is my quarter inch foot. I also have my blind hem, my zipper foot, and my open toe. So I'm gonna just move these over and we're gonna start here with real basic. This is the O foot, the quarter inch. Two things I adore about this foot, this right here, this flange, I, I always tell people it's kind of like bumper bowling. It just gives you a little extra security to make sure that your fabric is not gonna slide over. So it makes sure everything stays nice and straight. I use this for quilting and I do use it for bag making. All of my bag patterns use a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so I know that once I have this foot on, that I'm good to go. I'm gonna pop that on real quick, like that. So now my foot is on, and if I come over here in the quilt mode to stitch number two to quarter of an inch, it moves my needle right over for me. It moves it automatically to 8.3, which is a perfect quarter of an inch. I don't mind if my bag sewing has a little bit wider quarter of an inch, but when I'm quilting, I like it to be a, a little bit scant. And the reason is sometimes cutting is not perfect and sometimes blocks will get skewed. If I'm a little scant, at least I can trim, where if my quarter of an inch is too big, I'm kind of stuck and I can't do much with those blocks. So I can move this over if I want to. It stops me at nine because of this needle plate. And one of the other things, before I go any further, I have to show you the threading on this. I read a couple of things. I don't know if um, some of the people that have this know exactly how to use the threader. And if you don't have this machine, I just wanna show you anyway, because I just think it's awesome. So I'm using my spool pin. I always use that for these um, orophil cones. I just like it better. I'm just gonna take my thread and thread it. Don't worry, this isn't the exciting part. So when I get down here, I have my first hook in the front. I have my second hook over the needle. I have a little um, kind of a V shape for the needle threader and then I pull it up to where it cuts and cut off my tail. I lock it and then I hit the button right there. And just like that, it's threaded. I unlock and I'm ready to sew. So if you have this machine and you're having any issues with your needle threader, make sure that you're hooked one, two, three, and then back to your thread cutter and it will thread for you perfectly every time. And it moves the needle to the position it needs to be so it doesn't matter what stitch you're on here. So now I'm all ready to go. Now I can stitch my quarter of an inch seam, which we all know how to stitch a quarter of an inch. So I'm not gonna show you too much on there. Uh, the only thing I will show you is that down here, this is my width and this is my stitch length. It's standard at 1.8. I do bump it up to about 2.4 for bag making and quilting, maybe about 2.6, 2.7 if I have cork because you don't want too small of a stitch when you're using cork. So I'm gonna pop this off and show you my absolute favorite, favorite foot and show you how to use it. Do we have any, are we good? Okay, I'm gonna take a quick sip. Joyce missed what foot you're using. Um, I just used my O foot, which is the quarter of an inch. Right now I'm using the G, which is the blind hem. So if you are a bag maker, I hope that you don't know this so I can show you something cool. Um, and if you're not a bag maker, you might find a use for this as well. If you ever need to do an eighth of an inch seam. So for a blind hem, uh, there for the blind hem foot, there's a, a little flange in the middle. You can see it right here, I hope. So it's kind of like the quarter inch, but instead of being on the outside, it's in the center. And what I do with this foot is, I think I got my things out of order, okay. I sew, can you see that on camera, mom? It'll come up in a second. I like to sew on my handles an eighth inch and a quarter of an inch. So with the correct stitch on here, if I line this up like that, 
I can run it right down the side of my handle on both sides and get a beautiful eighth of an inch. And then I do the quarter of an inch for an accent. So I'll show you how to do that. Are you MMs or inches on one? Um, in for what? Most of the Janome um, features on here have millimeters, um, and I. But my table also has inches. I'm not sure if I hope that answers. If you're talking about my patterns, my patterns are written in inches. Too high and not in picture. You're too slim. Okay, this right here. Yeah. That should probably be better. So I'm going to show you how I do this stitching here. All right. So what I do, I already made this little handle. And I'm using pink thread, so hopefully it will contrast enough on the green. I've already made this handle. It has interfacing in it. So I'm sewing through four layers of interfacing and four layers of quilter's cotton. Uh, this is folded so that all my raw edges are inside. And what I'm going to do is go to my utility stitches, which is up here. And I'm going to click stitch number four. And that's instantly going to move this needle to the left. And again, because of this stitch plate, it's going to move it to 0.5. It won't go all the way over, but that's okay because it's actually a perfect eighth inch. When I top stitch, I always like to increase. So I'm gonna increase to 3.5. I'm usually in the three to 3.5 range. And I'm going to get this set. Up here, one, two, third button over is a little button right here. It shows a foot and a needle. And what that's gonna do is when I sew, Oops, I gotta put my press foot down. When I sew, and I'm on slow, there we go. <laughs> I was embroidering. And I stop, my foot automatically lifts up. So if I have to move anything, I can do that. If I don't want that on, I just turn it off. And then when I stop, it doesn't lift. That's really important when you're doing um, some of your top stitching. You might not want it to move if you stop sewing or you might want it to, uh, to stay down. So it's really nice that you have that option and it's a touch of a button. This machine does come with a knee lift, which I always use my knee lift until I got this machine and realized that it would do it for me. So I don't even have to use the knee lift. I haven't even taken it out of the box. <laughs> so I could just stitch, I'll just stitch a little bit here, use my scissors and just like that, there is my eighth of an inch beautiful top stitching. I can put the quarter of an inch foot back on, do a quarter of an inch, and I can do the other side, and I'm good to go. So that is, I call, it's a blind hem foot, but I call it my handle foot because I cannot live without it. And I've showed a lot of people, and they absolutely love it. So if you have it and haven't tried it, try it out and see what you think. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to switch to zippers. I have a question. Yeah. Which foot are you using for one eighth? Uh, the blind hem G foot with the flange in the middle. Can you set your machine in the set screen to inches or centimeters? Um, that's gonna be a Janome question because mine is in millimeters and I don't know if it changes or not. Uh, maybe Amy or somebody from Janome could jump in and answer that one. And then can you recap the foot letters example O? Yeah, of course. So what I've used so far is the O, which is the quarter of an inch foot and the G, which is the blind hem, or what I call my handle foot. Those are the two I've used so far. Next, I'm going to use my E, which is the zipper foot. And what I'm gonna do before I use my zipper foot is I'm gonna change my needle plate. And I, what I love is I don't have to get out a screwdriver. Underneath here, there's a lever, and I pop it up, take it out, and this always scares me a little bit uh, until I got used to it because it sounds like I'm forcing it. It's kind of a hard click, but you just click it down. It says to make sure I have the right presser foot and I'm good. And now you'll see all my buttons are white because now I've used a different needle plate so I can do a zigzag and I can move my needle more. The position that I was just in for uh, stitch number four for doing my eighth inch, I can move this now and I'm gonna move it to two and you can change the settings according to a couple people, Ginger and Marsha. Thank and Amy. you. And Amy. In your settings. And Amy would know that better than I do because Amy is a, an educator for Janome and I am a maker. So I'm going to play that card right now. And I'm just so used to seeing it in millimeters that I don't change it. But maybe later Amy and I will have a conversation and I'll change everything to inches and it'll be a breakthrough for me. 
Janome is international. Um, they're worldwide. So of course, of course they have options. It's Janome. So why am I not surprised? So Amy, we're going to talk later. So let's talk about the zipper foot. Let's talk about zippers. I know some of you right now are cringing. You don't want to put in zippers. They're awful. They're terrible. I promise you they're not that bad. And a lot of times I do use my quarter of an inch foot for zippers because it doesn't matter where this hits the zipper. It matters where the seam allowance is and the needle is not on the zipper, if that makes any sense. Um, if I'm looking at this zipper right here and I use my quarter of an inch foot, it doesn't matter that the foot is sitting on the zipper because my needle is going to hit where I want it to. So that's why a lot of times, oops, I do use my quarter of an inch foot, but they have an awesome uh, zipper foot, which is E, and I'm gonna use my E foot that on and I'm gonna show you some zipper stitching. So I have moved my needle over. Um, if you're unfamiliar with zipper feet, you do have the option to sew on the right or the left. It depends on what you're sewing and where you're comfortable. I have my needle on the left hand side. I am on utility stitch four and I'm using it at the 2.0 width and it's at 2.4 for the stitch length, which is just fine. So I'm gonna grab, let's see, I'm gonna grab this and this. So this right here is a little sandwich that I already made. And this is a zipper that I sell. It looks like metal, but it's actually plastic. So if you do have to sew over it, it's not an issue. The pull itself is metal. So obviously we don't want to sew over that. But if I have to sew over these um, zippers, like on the end of something, it's not going to be an issue. I've already gone ahead and I've gotten this ready. And what I did is I pinned my fabric, which this would be my lining, the polka dots. And I took my piece of printed cork here and I put some clips on it just to hold that in place. So I have my sandwich. I always say when I'm teaching students, I have bread, bread, and turkey. The zipper is the turkey. So it's in the middle, it's all sandwich, and all I need to do is sew a quarter of an inch seam down this edge. This is something that I would need to do for this bag right here. Even though that is curved, it's gonna be the same idea. And so what I'm gonna do is line this up and I have already moved my needle over, so put my foot down. Um, let me see, just, just, so when you use the zipper foot, you don't have any pressure on the zipper, so it's not gonna slide, it's not gonna push anything because the foot doesn't touch the zipper teeth, so it's gonna keep you nice and straight. Now there isn't a guide on the side, so sometimes you have to go a little bit slower. I'm a fast sewer, I try not to, but I do. But what you're gonna do here, and I'll put my needle down, I'm gonna take a few stitches, and I have already calculated this and measured it out, and I know that this stitch width and the edge of this foot will be the perfect combination for a quarter of an inch. And I don't sew over pins. My grandmother told me years ago not to, and I never ever do, because I don't want her to be mad at me. So I sew, take that out. I'm just gonna sew this seam here so you can see how it looks. I'll do a locking stitch at the end. Sometimes I back stitch, sometimes I do a locking stitch and cut. And now I can take this to my iron. I can give this a really good press and look how straight my zipper is. All because I use the right foot and that's a lot of sewing zipper it is using the right zipper don't use metal zippers if you're not familiar with them or if you're newer, just to give yourself that extra challenge. There's nothing wrong with metal zippers, but if you don't know how to work with them right or how to get the proper measurements, that can give you some issues. Always use plastic. Again, this is a plastic zipper. I don't know if you can, it's plastic. This is metal, just the pull. And I've sewn this and now I can press it and I can top stitch it. And I would put on my blind hem foot and do an eighth of an inch or my quarter of an inch and do that. So this is all ready to go. This would be um, like on a flap or on the top of a bag. This kind of technique is something you would use actually in a lot of my patterns, I use this. One of the other techniques that you might use, and Ginger this- has a question. Yeah. Why not use your walking foot with the zippered foot for the thickness? Oh, absolutely, you can use the walking foot. Um, this does come with the um, AccuFoot, and the only reason I'm not using it is just because these are the feet that I have with me. I just wanted to kind of go with some of the basics today, and the thickness on that, 
you might think that it's thick and it's actually not. I'm only sewing through one layer of cork, which the cork is substantial, but it's not so thick that it's hard to sew through by any means. It actually sews really beautifully. And I have a layer of fabric with interfacing and my zipper. So this is actually not as thick as you might think that it is. But yeah, definitely use your walking foot. This machine not only comes with some feet, it comes with an entire case. I mean, it's huge, this huge box of feet. So by all means, get into them. I just kind of wanted to keep it simple for, um, for this video just to show you some of the ones that I use. So what I've done here is I prepared a zippered pocket. So I already did my measuring and my cutting and my zipper is actually fused in place. I use fusible tape and no, I know someone's gonna ask, it does not gum up your needle because I'm just using a layer and it's fairly thin. So that's how this is held in place instead of using pins. And once this is in place, now I can take my zipper foot and I'm gonna just put it down and I'm gonna see where I want my needle. This is, it's pretty close. I can move it over a little bit if I want to. Kind of scoot that over. We'll try it at 1.5. Since this I consider top stitching, I'm gonna bump up a little bit. I'm gonna go to three on my stitch length. And I always start in the middle. I start away from the end, and there's a reason for that. And I'm gonna do a couple back stitches. I'm not gonna sew this whole thing and bore you guys, but the reason that I start in the middle is because, there we go, when you're using this technique that has tape holding it in place instead of pins, the more you pull on this, the more likely you are to move the zipper. It's, it's just fusible tape. It can very easily be pulled off. So this is kind of just a temporary fix to get it to your machine. And so what I do is I start here, I stitch all the way around to about here, I leave my needle down, and then I slowly and carefully unzip and I finish that stitching. A lot of people tend to start in the corners and the reason I don't do that is because again, I have to keep moving this and I don't like starting right in the corner. So I don't have any issues with this. I have nice neat top, um, corner, or excuse me, knots, either with the locking stitch or a couple back stitches and it doesn't bother me at all. Obviously I'm using pink thread on here, which I wouldn't do in a, in a bag that I was making for myself but that's how I sew a zipper in. And then once I'm done, I switch over to my quarter of an inch foot and I'm ready to keep sewing my bag. And let me see here, got some more top stitching. All right, so the last foot I'm gonna do is my open toe foot. So I'm gonna pop this zipper foot off. The open toe is the F, F as in Frank. So that's it right there. This foot, I don't use a lot, but when I'm doing a decorative stitch, absolutely, I like to use this foot. And I have on the wallet that I was throwing around earlier, I did some decorative stitches on here. I just randomly picked numbers from the top and just saw, you know, just to see whatever I liked. I threw some stitches on here. This is a piece of cork on another piece of cork. I just used a couple different colors of thread. It might not pick up on camera, um, but I tend to use 50 and 40 weight thread and it shows up really nicely on the cork. So if you don't have an embroidery feature on your machine, use some of these decorative stitches. There's so many of them and there's so many to play with. And what a fun little, you know, extra accent that you can add to any of your bags. So when I'm doing that or if I need to do a zigzag, I will put this on. And also if I'm quilting and I'm working um, with foundation paper piecing, I always use this. I have that little red arrow in the center, which will keep me straight and I can see what I'm working on underneath. I don't have any surprises when I start stitching. I know some of you are cringing, I'm just throwing a piece of cork on here, but I can see exactly where I am and exactly where I'm lined up. And don't worry, I'll still use this cork. <laughs> All right, so let's see if there's anything else on the machine or if we're ready to switch over. Um, I think that's almost it for the machine. I did just want to touch base one more time on this button right here, which is the, the foot up key. Again, most of the time you can see it's black. I am using it, which means anytime I stop sewing or anytime I use the scissor function and it stops, it will automatically lift it up. So I don't have to keep using my uh, presser foot or using this button. I do turn that off when I'm going around and doing my final top stitching. When I get to this part of a bag, right around the top edge, which is pretty much means I'm done. I've already finished everything and I'm just doing that final bit of stitching. I leave that foot, or leave the foot down. And the reason is 
Sometimes, again, I have to take my table off to do my top stitching. Sometimes it shifts a little bit because it's pulling away from the machine. And the bag is the thickest when it's finished. So if I leave that there, it's kind of like having a third hand to just hold it and keep a little bit of pressure on there so that I can go ahead and do my top stitching. And it means my last bit, which is always the first part that I see, comes out absolutely perfect. So um, if anyone has any questions on the machine, if we're good, I'm going to switch back over and uh, get ready to say good, good afternoon and goodbye. <laughs> so hang on, I'm going to move the camera. And there we go. All right. All right. I think that's everything. Um, if you have any other questions, I can hang around for a minute and answer them. If there's anything else that you would like me to show you or anything you would like to know about me, let me know. I will save this video and in the top part, I will also put my information. So if you think of something later or if you need to chat with me about anything, you are welcome to do so. And I will link my uh, So Many Creations Facebook page if you want to follow me there. I'm live every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Do we have any more Name questions? Name of the pattern with the embroidery on front. This one. Uh, this is my Harper handbag. This has, this does not have to be done in cork. I did this one with cork on the front and back. The cork accents are written into the pattern and the cork handles. And then I added fabric on the side here. This embroidery design, uh, I actually did pay for and download. It's not uh, one of the set in uh, pre-programmed ones in the machine. But this is all done with Aurifil 50 weight cotton thread because I love how embroidery looks with the cotton. I love that matte finish. Any other questions? No, just a lot of thank yous and from awesome. Nelly. I want your, I want to your patterns. I want your patterns. You got it. <laughs> you can have them all. Um, thank you so what is much. Your shop location from Kimberly. Um, my, <laughs> it's not a real shop. It's kind of a little pop up shop. Long story short, I used to travel a ton for shows. I did about fifteen to twenty, but we all know that I can't really travel right now. Uh, so my sweet husband, whose office I'm actually in, said you can use the part I'm not using, and I took everything out of my van and set it up. So it's kind of just a mini pop up shop. It is located in Schenectady, New York. Anybody know where Schenectady is? <laughs> if you do, I'll know where you're from. Um, I'm just outside of Albany. But we are online and we do ship uh, three days a week and we offer free shipping in the United States, no minimums. And I'm gonna post all of my contact information. Thank you so much for joining me for my first Janome Live. I hope it's not my last. And uh, I'll hopefully I'll see you guys on Facebook. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, do you wanna hit the finish button? <laughs> My mom's first live, she's learning. It should be finished down in the bottom.